Just uh, Quickset and uh, Schlage, I think that they managed to finish when their project, but they were just doing this as a scholarly work. Uh, you could easily extend this. Yeah, the, what, so basically, obviously, we all know what's going on. That little tiny table in the photo is exploded with the, the, the long range camera, and from there they could read the bidding on that. And, it, and yeah, on, not, they're not just reading it by looking at it, they're del developing computer software to just tell you. What the what the bidding is, and they're trying to work it out so that even if it's bent in all these different angles, they could still you know because you have the the bow and the blade of the key as a reference point for how big whatever in the photo is. So using fancy math, which we cannot <laughs> fathom to to even uh, get into, they they can figure it out. And they're working on moving on to uh, like the angled key that we had. If that's tilted at the wrong angle, maybe you can't see it. They're working on figuring all that out for for more advanced keys. And maybe not that one specifically, but but better keys. Yeah. In uh, just in this picture here, the parts that are circled in red, those are the shoulders of the key. And there are several known points in the systems they were working with. The shoulders is just one of them. So you have a key that's slightly <laughs> angled, slightly tilted, but they can use Use those points to normalize the rest of the key and get that straight bidding again straight from code. Um, this is kind of a cool story. So, there's, there's, we have both of them, right? The two? No, I think this. I think we only have this one. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Well, we we may have two cool stories, but this is one. Uh, <laughs> Diebold made these voting machines. <laughs> no, no. That, <laughs> Someday you too will be. And a they were machine. so proud of these voting machines that they showed. They were like, "These are so secure." Oh, we do have both of them. I'm sorry. We do. We have yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. I know we have both. Sorry, of them. sorry. Um, so you get two good stories. <laughs> so Diebold was like, "We are so proud of this," and they had, you know, just some guy like, "Yeah," like holding up the picture of the key on their website. <laughs> and so some cunning genius. Um, decided, well, I'll just make a copy. And so, can you tell which one's a real one and which one's a copy? And of course, it's the same key for every lock. Yeah, and it's the same key for every voting machine, which is yeah. the. I, I, I fucked up. Oh. No, 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 that's fucking. Uh, it's good. Can I do that? Yeah, go for it. The next cool story <laughs> is the New York MTA. Idiots. So their subway system uses a. They have a a a restricted keyway Yale cylinder, right? So it's it's a normal basic cylinder, but they have their own keyway. So oh, you can't get our our keys. Well. People are selling master keys to the system. So not only are they selling keys, they're selling master keys, which uh, is, we'll get into in a second. Yeah. Um, and uh, so this reporter, uh, we haven't confirmed, but <laughs> this reporter bought one of the master keys or obtained it somehow. And this is his article showing this is the key to open everything on the New York MTA. So nobody needs to buy one anymore. Yeah. And there's better pictures of the key. This is really shrunk down to fit in here. But um, I love the look on his face, too. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> just yeah. go, just go. And the key only costs like $20 street value or something something ridiculous. But it opens every every type of that lock in the, the MTA system. And, th and this uh, this became enough of a story that I'm hoping that somebody there managed to go through and rekey and upgrade, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Uh, yeah, okay, so the next section is key blank. So, okay, you can't get access to the key that you want to attack at all, ever. Uh, but most of the time, you can get access to a blank for that system. Um, and do we talk about easy entry at all? Okay, real quick, uh, even if you can't get the blank to that system, if you can get access to an incorrect key break briefly, there's a machine called an easy entry machine that will, with a, with a small filament, th actually feel through your key and then mill you a blank for it uh, so that you can then carry out any of the key blank attacks. On top of that, it's actually uh, illegal to manufacture uh, patented key blanks, which mm. there are a lot of. The easy entry is awesome. It goes, okay, that's a patented blank. Well, we'll take out this section here or, or slightly. They'll, it'll move around the pieces so that it still fits in the lock, but it's not the same keyway. <laughs> it's really, really awesome tool. It's really cool. It's really cool. It's got kind of a weird spelling, but you can track it down. Okay. Uh, and the best part, all the keys have smiley faces on the Yeah, side. they're awesome. <laughs> they're, they're really cool. Smiley face bows. Um, you know what? Why don't, why don't we just go through the list as we go through? Yeah, I think that's the better way to do it. Oh, okay. yeah, you threw that How in. many of you saw the talk in here the last hour? Was it good? Big yeah, hand for yeah, okay, that's most of you. Good, good. Okay, well, what they figured out is that handcuff keys are all similar. They're similar, but they're not universal. So you, you can't just have one handcuff key open everything. Well, they measured, uh, the tool team, DV and friends, 
they went through and they, they measured all the different kinds of handcuff keys to try and do basically what the easy entry does. Find one that fits in all of them but is different. So they made this. This is a Smith & Wesson cuff key, and they added this little groove in the center, and that works on a surprising number of locks. Like, what is it? Do- I didn't see the last talk because I was in yeah, the prep room. Yeah. <laughs> but was it dozens, dozens of locks, I think, they're up to? Yeah, awesome. so the, the count right now, the current uh, victim tally is about 14. <laughs> um, cool. And again, more smileys. Okay, uh, so overlifting. Overlifting is an awesome attack. I really, really, really like it. Um, this was a gift uh, to me from Barry Wells, uh, the head of Tool in the Netherlands. Um, and it was actually his lovely wife, Charlotta, that showed me the attack for the first time. So I'm going to just sort of talk you through the slides here. Uh, Wafer tumblers are different than normal pin tumblers. Uh, over on your left there uh, are the different lengths of the wafer tumbler. So they have the same outside dimension, but inside they're cut to different lengths. Those different lengths, your key actually moves through that wafer. And those different lengths are pulled up or out of... <laughs> my they're, they're my pu- phone is ringing over on the other side of the table. They're pushed, Sorry. They're pushed up or down to a line in the center. Yeah, the, the big circle with the like Green Lantern looking logo, uh, that is the inner chamber of the lock. So those tabs can push up into the upper chamber or down into the bottom chamber, and your key as it enters it brings them both, and you'll see right here. Oh, and that's a key and a key blank. Uh, so in the first of these images, the wafers are at rest. Second of the images, the correct key is in, we're going top bar. Uh, the correct key is in, in the lock, and the wafers are pulled out of their chambers, and can now, when you apply that turning pressure, rotate inside the lock, and your lock can open in the third picture there. Okay, all the way down in the lower left, we have the blank inside the lock. And what's happened now is that the blank is pushing these wafers into the opposite chambers. It's pushing them away from their at-rest chambers into the opposite side. When you apply your turning pressure, they bind. Okay, the little red X's, which I think are probably super tiny, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, The little red X's are where they're hitting the sides of the incorrect chamber. As you remove the blank, because you've applied that pressure, they don't snap back into their chambers, they hit the side of the chamber. Yes, yeah, yeah, that guy, you got it. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, instead of being able to actually go back into their chamber, when they snap back, they hit the side of it and stay in their unlocked position. You can then turn it with anything to open the lock. Uh, And I'm going to try to demo this on stage, which is always a terrible idea. Don't fuck up. (laughs) All right, uh, normal key in the lock. Got it, such a good sound. Okay, awesome. These are bike locks, I believe. Yeah, these are Dutch bicycle locks. They go around, uh, like, in the tire, like you would on a motorcycle. Uh, Okay, this is the key blank. Does not operate the lock. Oh. You can do it, buddy. Oh, no! I did it on video twice this morning in my room. But my stupid Linux laptop can't play the video. <laughs> oh, man. Can you do it? Yeah. Okay. Play along. It's, a, it's actually a... <laughs> this is super embarrassing. This is totally demonstration effect because it's actually a really easy attack. Uh, and my drunken roommates were doing it for a while and really messed up the lock pretty badly. <laughs> uh, okay, so I am going to let DG talk really quickly about this delightful pinky while I keep doing this and I'll yell when it opens. Okay. <laughs> so, there's, a, uh, there's kind of an old thing and kind of a new thing about this. They're called rake or gypsy keys. And so basically, oh, again... your other picture, sorry. Oh, that's okay. okay. <laughs> um, basically, uh, what it is is we, we take this key and we file down everything except for the tip. In the rate key, we file like a kind of a wave pattern. So it's not the working key, obviously, but we just modify the bidding pattern. Oh, was not it? No. Oh, he's toying, I, with, I was just toying with us. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So what we do is we're going to use this kind of like a pick. We're going to put it in. We're going to do what he's doing where you're applying tension, and we're just going to run through the lock and have it. It's kind of like overlifting, except we're not starting. Oh! I'm sorry that took so long. It really shouldn't have. Thank you. <laughs> I think we still got it, what, a minute? I think that's pretty yeah. good time for Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> okay. 
Why don't, why don't you explain this? Yeah, no worries. Uh, so uh, another important part of both of these is basically you're making a pick out of a key, right? So you're both applying tension and running it through the lock at the same time. The gypsy keys uh, usually just had a large uh, bump at the end of them. Uh, I know that light pink on white might not be the best uh, visual here. Okay. <laughs> um, and the rate keys and martial keys as well. Martial keys are for autos. Uh, both rate keys and martial keys have different patterns of cuts throughout them. Uh, that, while applying tension and running lightly through the lock, will hopefully set your pins. Really, the whole concept is you make a pick out of a key. And the huge benefit to both that attack and overlifting is if anybody catches you with this, it's just a key. Uh, these, are, these are incredible surreptitious tools that really can do a lot of damage. Uh, important note, this doesn't just work on Dutch bicycle locks. All of your cars are wafer locks. I've seen a VW overlifted in 47 seconds, brand new, not like two years ago. Um, awesome. Impressioning. Are you? Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, I made these lovely little images here, uh, probably hitting you with a lot of information. So what you need, basically impressioning, you are taking a key blank and you are turning it into a functional key by getting information back from the lock. You're, gi you're, you're giving it the information of the blank. It's giving you the information of where you should be cutting the key. Uh, so you need a file for this. You need some sort of magnifying lens. These are uh, symbols. These are not the sort of files and magnifying lenses <laughs> you want. Um, you need an impressioning handle or a pair of vice grips. Basically, you need something to hold the key with very firmly. Uh, and you need key blanks. You probably want a few key blanks, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, the amount of pressure, the amount of force that you're putting into the key blank will often uh, actually damage and break the key. Uh, so you might need to move through a few to get this done. Okay, so with the key blank inserted in the lower left there, you can see that now the key pins, the red pins, are blocking the shear line instead of the driver pins. And this is a good point, a good note for any of you who are doing lock picking. It's not just shoving the pick pins up as far as you can because those key pins will block it just as easily as the driver pins. A lot of people shove them up way too high, but that's not what we're talking about. Okay, uh, so the, all of the red pins are binding right now. You turn the blank in the lock and then lift up and down. Uh, I typically just go turn, one, two, three, turn, other direction, one, two, three. Um, and as uh, you'll see on the next slide, the, the marks that you get, it's going to give you information so that you are slowly removing material from the key blank. When the pins are binding, like in the first of the two pins there in the lower right, you're still getting marks on the key. Well, the way it works is that when, they're, when those pins are bound, they can't move. So by moving Thank the you. key up and down, you're making marks on the soft brass of the key. It, it, those pins are pushing into it and making small but, but discernible marks. Yeah. And then that's how you know which pins to file. And once a pin is in the right position, it stops making marks or it makes very, very light marks. It looks different. <laughs> yeah. Once it can actually turn with you as you're turning it, it stops making those big marks and uh, you can't see it anymore. Uh, and that's when you know you have the right height. So it's really just telling you how to do it. So the marks very light. Uh, you, will, you really do need magnification to see them. People have all sorts of different ways to do it using different colored lights, uh, uh, charring the blank so that there's a little bit of like soot on it, um, sharpie marking, all sorts yeah. of things. Uh, ultraviolet works ultra really well. Absolutely. You just get like a five dollar uh, uh, light and ink set and you just coat the blank and then when you put it in and you, you do your impressioning technique, you take it out. All the spots that don't have UV on it are the spots you're supposed to file. And it's very, very easy to do. Yeah. Uh, and then once you've filed it, you have a fully functional key. It'll look a little weird. It'll have those little uh, scoopy bits, um, technical terminology. Uh, but it will work forever. Um, and this is, impressioning, I think, is one of the coolest attacks in lock picking. Um, and it's one of the most useful for locksmiths because they, they can go in not knowing at all how how, what the, the key should look like and come out with a key that they can <clears throat> decode again to make a real key so that the cuts look right or they can make it on a more durable blank and so on and so forth. So it's uh, very, very useful for them. And this, and DG's going to talk about this, this is my new favorite attack in Locksport. Um, okay, so we have the man that invented this here in the room. Big hand for Josh. Really, my, my new favorite attack. Yeah, okay. So what Josh did is the... Do we have a picture of the lock? Oh. No! You didn't put the lock in? Okay. Uh, I'll explain give me a it. picture. How many of you saw Mark Tobias's talk on the smart key and other stuff? This is the smart key, okay? Yeah. 
in the smart key, there's wafers. And each wafer hooks into a, another wafer, and those all get raised to the right height by the, the pins. Now, if you can look inside the lock, you could see that the, the wafers inside are sitting at different heights where they connect into each other. And from that, you can, you can decode the key bidding and make a key, you know, whether by, by, by hand or with a machine. Again, you're getting the code with which to make the key. If only you could somehow see inside if the only. lock. So what Josh did... <laughs>